Good evening, Prajan. Hello, Auntie Joyce. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Looking very good. You too. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. So I went up to Northern Thailand for a few mm. days <clears throat> to uh, look at the Buddha statue. How is it coming along? So beautiful. I nearly wept when I saw it. So <laughs> because uh, real Buddhist art should reflect the qualities of the Buddha, right? So we have the purity, the wisdom, the compassion, you have the kindness and you have the aloofness. You have, it's a very difficult thing to achieve in a piece of stone to get uh, stillness, which is radiating metta and uh, kindness, which is also aloof and to try to capture a quality of a being with blessings fully replete, who is also non-attached. And uh, it's one of my hobbies to study Buddhist art and visit uh, museums around the world when I have a chance. And so what's curious about this piece is because of the COVID situation, we delayed the building of the building where it will go for a year. And so I, I was speaking with the sculptor and he was saying that, you know, one of the reasons it has turned out so nice is he was able to do it when he was inspired, when he was in the mood rather than, rather than uh, to do it by a deadline. And so that obviously, so he really enjoyed it. He knew what I was aiming for. So before we started this piece, I said to him, his name is Monkon. I said to him, this has to be your most beautiful piece of Buddhist art this lifetime. So, <laughs> and I know that sounds a bit, uh, uh, what's the word, demanding, but uh, <laughs> we, are, we are one of his best customers. So he, he, he did the work in the Chedi. So I have been working with him for seven years. And uh, with the permission of the monastery committee, we actually sent him to India to study the Buddha statues in India because here he is trying to recreate uh, Buddha start with an Indian influence, but he's never been to see the originals. And there's only, for a sculptor, they, they think in 3D. So there's only so much you can see in a picture. They need to see from side on. They need to, to actually see the thing. So, so we did help to get him to both Gaya and Varanasi and, and Saranath and have a look at some museums. And uh, so, yes, I've been training him about the difference in proportions because in the, in the Thai style Buddhas, I don't know how interested you are, but anyway, it's always nice to start with a bit of small talk. So <laughs> I'll just, that's what I was doing. So that's what we'll talk about first, okay? So in the Thai style Buddhas, they're sitting half lotus and uh, half lotus means that knees are wider apart. And then you'll find that Thai Buddhas will tend to seem a bit more feminine, they're a bit more triangle shaped. And, uh, but the Indian Buddhas are in full lotus, which makes the knees closer together. And then the shoulders look broader. And I quite like that. I quite like, uh, because the Buddha was from warrior stock, you know, the Buddha was a noble warrior prince who, who became enlightened. So I like my Buddhas to look slightly warrior-like. <laughs> and anyway, it's your, it's, you know, individual preferences, but so anyway, it's coming along very, very beautifully. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased because when you look at it, you just think ancient Indian Buddh Buddhism and it's peaceful. But what you won't know is it's actually a fusion of three different styles from three different ages. Only I know that <laughs> because, because I was the one who instructed him, I want a Gupta style Buddha with a Gupta aura, and I want, but I want a parlor style lotus throne and Bodhi tree uh, canopy, and I want Newari Nepali style Bodhisattvas flanking the Buddha on either side. And uh, anyway, it's very beautiful. JC, do you have a picture of the Buddha ready to bring up? Uh, I do. Not ready to, you do? Because, uh, because Tanajan Anani is coming to our katina, Samsara allowing, uh, we, 
we I wanted to get the statue here in time so that we can have a bigger sangha in Tanajan helping to bless the statue. So that's why I had to go up and, and work on it for five days. What you won't know from this picture is that this Buddha statue is two meters and 80 centimeters tall. So it is a significant piece of four, four ton sandstone. And uh, in India, they, they used, uh, in the Gupta period, they used sandstone. In the Pala period, they used Bihar black stone. So <clears throat> I think you can see, and it's got that nice Indian, the sense of space around the Buddha's face, I think really gives that lovely sense of peace and emptiness. But then the floral aura and the devas and the bodhisattva gives the sense of fully manifest blessings. And then you have the five disciples. And in, in Sarnath, the image that this is partly based on had an image of a queen and her son next to the five disciples. And most, most people, when they reproduce this piece, will take that out. And I didn't want to take it out. I thought, no, 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 because it turns out that the queen was the sponsor of that Buddha statue. And she sponsored the Buddha statue because she wanted a prince. She wanted a son. And so she commissioned the best artists of the day to produce this masterpiece. And she did have a son, but I like, I like to have them there because it basically says Buddhism wasn't just for the monks, Buddhism was for women and children as well. And then we have the Arahants down below, the five disciples in the deer park. But then we also have Maitri and Avalokiteshvara, future Buddhas flanking the Buddha either side. So everyone's there. Do you approve? Sadu, 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 Praja. Suai mai, suai mai. Suai, suai mai. In Thai, we say suai, beautiful. <laughs> Praja, so, which one is the uh, Bodhisattva Maitreya? So we put, I discussed with Tanajuna Nan where he should be. So because he's the next Buddha, he's on the right hand side of the Buddha. So in, in terms of seniority, the right hand side would be more senior. So he's the one on the right. The right of the Buddha, the, our left. So in ancient Indian iconography, the way you tell the difference between bodhisattvas is often in the crown ornament. So on Maitreya's head is a stupa or a chedi, which symbolizes the fact that his enlightenment as a Buddha is destined and his merit is full. So that's basically a done deal. He's definitely going to be enlightened. So that's what I had to go up and supervise the sculpturing of the stupa on Maitreya's head and the sculpturing of the lotus bud on Avalokiteshvara's head and uh, the details of the aura around the Buddha. And I don't know if you, you, you can see that the aura is a slightly different color, right? Yeah. So this is, yeah. an ex this is an experiment and I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but I think it's going very nicely. I thought that such a huge piece of sandstone might be a little bit bland. And it turned out that the Chang Mongkon the worker had a piece of uh, Rosalia pink marble from Turkey left over in a good in a big enough size to to put in uh, an aura of a different type of stone. So that aura is a different type of stone marble from Turkey. And uh, depending on if we leave it unpolished, it will have this nice powdery pink color. If we polish it, it will become an orangey brown, orangish pink color. So we'll have, we'll have to see, we'll experiment. I'm thinking of going with a polished on the surface, but the relief left kind of powdery as a bit of a contrast of texture and color. So Yurajan has been working on his hobby. <laughs> I hope, hope you approve. Ajahn actually has many hobbies. <laughs> so. Definitely going to look pretty, pretty good under your watchful eyes, Prajan. Okay, one little bit more of while we're here, before I before we move on to the chanting, shall I? While we're getting the small talk over and done with, would you like to meet the latest member of the Anandigiri community? Why not, Prajan? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the new cat is it a Persian yeah. one, Ajahn? So the new monastery cat, say hello, hello. 
สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะ His name is l u g e l which means jewel ball because he has these beautiful blue eyes which look like jewels. So, so he is half Siamese and half Persian. And how did he come to be? One of the monas, one of my close students in Thailand, is breeds pure bred dogs and trains dogs. And he asked me, a n a a n a t o I would like to offer you a monastery dog. So, which type of dog would you like? And I answered, the type of dog that I would like is a cat. <laughs> 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 and he said, why? And I said, well, I like dogs, but when you actually have a dog in the monastery, we, said, we don't have a A wall or a fence around us, and all the, many village dogs come wandering through the monastery. And and because we don't have a dog here, they don't bark; they just wander through quietly. But if you have a monastery dog, it gets territorial, and then it will bark at every single dog that walks through the monastery. And I like meditating, so I don't like barking. So uh, he said, "What kind of cat?" And I said, "Well, Siamese." And so he did a quick search on Facebook. Thailand in Thailand, people find things on Facebook. Direct message, got a call back, and that this this cat was eight weeks old on that day, which is the which is the age that you can separate them from the mum. And his driver was coming up from Bangkok on that day, so he asked me in the morning, "What kind of dog you want?" And I had this cat within 12 hours. So now the the thing about Siamese cats is that they were they've been in Thailand for 700 years. And they were only allowed in the palace and in the monastery. Ordinary people weren't allowed to have them. And so, what I think the consequence of that was was that people with spare time, who were gentle natured, gave these cats a lot of affection. And so, over a period of centuries, you have uh, very affectionate, chatty cats. And so, we have two other cats. I'm just going to talk about cats for two more minutes, and then <laughs> we'll talk about chatting. <laughs> so, five minutes, Rajan. <laughs> okay, so you know the we have some lovely cats, Ginger and Smokey, but they are more kind of like outdoor cats, mousers, and they they don't come when you call them, and they don't sit on your lap unless they're cold. So they're kind of aloof and uh, self-contained cats. But the thing about the purebred cats is they were selected over many generations for their affectionate quality. So so when you have a This kind of cat, it comes when it's cold and it's happy to sit on your lap. And so, uh, yeah. Anyway, I I do I do like the cat. 